Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome to another Docker Compose and Django tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to build and start a Django project with Postgres, Redis, and Celery. So by the end of this tutorial, we will have a baseline Docker Compose file comprising of Django, Postgres, Redis, and Celery. So as per normal, it would be useful for you to have seen the previous tutorials because I'm going to assume you understand some of the commands that I'm going to be utilizing. And of course, if you are new to this tutorial series, of course, you're going to have Docker and Docker Compose installed, Python and a code editor. So the process here, we're going to use the code from the previous tutorial. You can download that in the video description. And then I just want to re review first the Postgres installation because here we're going to switch over to 3.8 Alpine. So it's a different image and there's a slightly different configuration for Postgres. So as we go through this tutorial series, I'll try and switch it up a little bit so you can see the different installations for potentially the different versions of uh, operating systems that you potentially want to utilize within your containers. So we go ahead and configure Redis and Celery and then we build and start the container. And then we just go through the process at the end of quickly building a Django Celery task so that we can test to see that everything is working. So when you open up the code from the previous tutorial, you will see that we have a number of different options here. We first of all installed Postgres and then we went over to MySQL. So let's just get rid of the MySQL information and let's just reactivate Postgres in the Docker Compose file. So Postgres is what we're going to be utilizing in this tutorial. Now we'll go ahead and just remove the core for now. Uh, that was a, a Django app and then obviously we're not going to need manage pi so we'll recreate this as we go through and then you'll see that in the commands file there was just the commands that we're going to be utilizing and some more information about part four. Um, we've got the docker compose file, the docker file and the requirements file. So let's just get rid of the MySQL client. We're not going to need that anymore. So like I said in the prelude, we're first of all, we're going to head over to the Docker file and just change. So if you saw in the previous tutorial, Python 3.8 is quite a large image. So we want to slim this down. So we're going to use the Alpine version here, which is a slim version of this. So let's just move ahead to that. Now, one of the issues here when we do that is uh, looking at the requirements here. Um, sorry, Docker and Compose utilizing this Postgres image potentially this isn't going to install by default. There's some other dependencies that we're going to need to install to get this working. And this is specific for the Alpine version. So first of all, then let's go over to the Docker file. Let's add these additional dependencies here. So you can see here, app update and then app add, and then the Postgres SQL dev, GCC, Python 3 dev, Marcel dev. So these are just dependencies that we're going to need to have in order to get our Postgres database working on Alpine. So once you've done that, and by all means have a look at the different packages. Uh, once you've done that, let's just go back into requirements here. Let's uh, just install, we don't need the binaries, I think anymore. So let's go ahead and just double check. Yeah, I think 2.8 is the the latest or 2.8 and above so um, that's not a problem okay so we're going to be installing redis so let's go ahead and add that into our requirements so we're also going to install celery so let's just also add that into requirements so we now have all the requirements set so let's head over to the docker compose file so here we're just going to extend. Now what I'm going to do here is because everything pretty much depends on the database to run first, I'm just going to add this up to the top here. So just to try and put it into some sort of logical order, just for myself almost. So the database um, is what everything depends on. We want to load that up first, that service up first. So you can see here this app depends on the database to be running. So the database needs to load first. So it can be important the order in which services are brought up 
here I'm going to, or started, sorry, here I'm just going to change this to app here in line 23, the container name. And we've got the container name there. So let's go ahead now and add Redis. So with all the images, you'll find the Docker official image for Redis on the Docker Hub. Um, again, there are different versions of this. So we have the Buster and the Alpine version, for example. So if you know Linux, you'll know that there's different versions of Linux um, or different flavors of Linux and one being Debian. So Buster is just a code name for Debian. So if you wanted to run that flavor of Linux um, in your container, you can select Buster, else maybe select Alpine. Okay, so have a read of that if you want to know what Buster, Alpine, all these different versions are referring to. So here we're just going to go ahead and inside of our Docker Compose file, we're going to add Redis. So Redis isn't dependent upon anything really. So we could add it to the top if we want to do. It doesn't really matter at this point where we add it because we can describe utilizing depends on in what loads up first. But you can see here we're going to be utilizing the Redis Alpine image. So just a slim version of Redis. And I'm just added the container name. So that's pretty much it for Redis for a baseline configuration. So now inside of our Docker Compose file, let's go ahead and describe our Celery service. So we start off with describing the name of our service, and this time we include restart always. So although this isn't necessarily a mandatory feature, I just wanted you to start to draw into some of the different options that Docker provides us. So this is all to do with start containers automatically, and this can be pretty handy to, handy to know, particularly if you're going to start utilizing or thinking about this in production. Because, for example, maybe your container fails. Maybe it's a, a strange issue that only happens once. You want to potentially restart the container in that case. So here we have this flag on failure, which restarts the container if it exits due to an error, for example. So here we've utilized always um, in our configuration. So it always restarts the container if it stops. Um, if it manually stopped, it is restarted only when Docker daemon restarts or the container itself is manually restarted. So the benefit here, if you're wondering why we would include this, Celery is a key service here. If we were to tie this and hook this up to our application, our Django application, we would be depending upon this container working in order for a lot of our service to work in our website. So potentially it's critical that we try to always restart the container if there is a problem. So next up is the build. Uh, so here I place context with a dot. Now, the reason why I've done this is for no particular reason other than to show you the fact that if you haven't already done so, if you go to extensions, you can download the official Docker, Docker extension here. And this gives you a number of different tools. You can see on the left-hand side, we've now got a different option. And that will provide us a number of different tools that we can utilize to support the process of developing and publishing and starting Docker containers, but within Visual Studio Code. So one of the other benefits, we have some hoverovers here. So context, either a path or directory containing our Docker file. So here, essentially, we're just defining where our Docker file is. So now we set up a command to start the worker process. This is going to provide us some information in the terminal here, info. This is going to provide us a certain amount of information. So for example, when we set up a task, or sorry, when we start a task or run a task, we can see that happening. When Celery starts up, we get all that information in the terminal. So it's pretty useful in development. Of course, you might want to turn that off in production. So there isn't really too much else to this for a kind of baseline configuration, we could go ahead and use debug or info. I didn't mention that, two different levels of information that you can then return to the terminal. Uh, so volume, so we could set up volumes if we needed that, uh, container name uh, depends on. So here, Celery is gonna depend on the database started, uh, Redis running, and then also the application started. So there's three dependencies here for Celery. So we set the depends on here. Remember, this is defining the order of how things should load up before Celery loads. So it's essentially saying that all these services need to be started before Celery starts because it's dependent upon all of these different services for the service to work correctly. 
So that should pretty much be it for configuration. So let's go over to our commands. So here we're just going to go ahead and now build. So let's do a Docker Compose build to build our image. So that might take a few seconds to do that. So with that ready, we can now utilize the Docker Compose run again. So this time I want to go ahead and start my core project. So this is going to create a new Django project. So utilizing Docker Compose run, as we've learned before, we're going to uh, start and remove the containers. Um, but we are going to run this one time command to start a new project because we don't have a project at the moment. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to obviously work through the Docker Compose file and all the settings. So at this point, what's going to happen is Redis will probably be downloaded. The image will be downloaded. And once you've done with that and it's all set up, what you'll have, well, there won't be any containers because we removed them. But what you will have at this point is now your core, which is your Django project and your data. And that is the Postgres database data. So if you're not too sure how those folders appear, that's because we're using volumes here. So when we run that previous command, we're running through this script here and you can see that we're building um, a Django application that was in the command, um, the core app or new project, sorry. But we're also mirroring across the volumes from the container over to our local machine here. And that's both for the app here and also the database. So that's why these two folders uh, the data in the core folders appeared. So let's go ahead and just run Docker Compose up just to show you what's going to happen at this point if we did try to bring up the containers. It looks like um, at this point everything is trying to start up and you can see that Celery is causing a problem here. Now the reason why this is a problem is because it's looking for something that doesn't exist. That's the issue here. Right, so you can see if I can scroll up a little bit, Django is ready to go. Now I can confirm this by using some commands or just going into my Docker container here. And I can see that Celery isn't being started, but Redis, Django app and Postgres, that seems to be okay. So what you'll notice here is that Docker is trying to restart all the time consistently Celery. And that is because, remember, in Docker Compose, Celery restart always. So it's going to keep retrying starting that service continually. So what we want to do now then is we want to create a new application in Django. Let's remember we've got this volume. So here we're being mirrored. The, this local directory here is being mirrored across to our container. So I could just add an application like I normally could would. Uh, with Django right here, but we're going to move into the container and then run the command on the container because I just want to show you the fact that here, when we're using an Alpine build, we can't use the, the bash shell. So let me show you, for example, so here is the um, exec command that allows us to run a command in the container. So this is the container, which is now called, in actual fact, Django app. That's the container name. So you can see here it says, when we try and run this to access the terminal in that container, no such file or directory exists. And that's because it doesn't exist in the Alpine build. So to access the shell with the Alpine build, you're going to need to, let's just run the previous command again. Uh, but this time you're going to need the SH at the end. So that's going to take you into the shell. And then from there we can run the Python manage Py. And then we want to start app and we call this app new app. There we go. So you can see on the left hand side now we have this new app that's being mirrored across from our volume and a container to our local drive here. So now we can go ahead and just finish off the Celery build. So I do have a video on how to set up Celery. So go ahead and check that out. I'm just going to quickly now go ahead and create a new file here called celery.py so it's just following the exact tutorial um, so I'm going to need these conf this configuration here so it is in the repository if you want to follow this I'll just take you through the process if you've not done this before um, so this in actual fact apologies I was doing that too quickly this file needs to be in the core apologies so the celery file here needs to be in the core so that's the first thing 
So we're going to need to add here to the uh, the init file here. So here we're basically just going to, as I've kind of left here, this will make sure the app is always imported when Django starts so that the shared tasks that we generate will use this app. Okay, so that's in the uh, the init file here in the core. So we're going to need that. So in the settings, we're going to need to find um, Redis. We're going to need to hook up Celery with Redis. So there's just two settings here for that. So that's the Celery broker URL and the result backend. So that's going to hook into Redis. So now Celery knows where Redis exists for us to actually utilize it. So we will need a task. So let's go into a new app here. We can just get rid of some of these files. All right, so let's just get rid of ev pretty much everything. Um, so we won't need the views for now. Um, deleting the wrong files, I think. Um, so let's go into views. So we won't need that. Um, and our tests there. Uh, so this is all in the the new app. So let's just end up with that. So let's just move across, uh, or let's actually create a new file here, sorry, a new app um, for our tasks. So here we're just gonna describe the tasks. They're a very simple task. We're just gonna add two numbers together. So again, like I said, this is from the previous tutorials um, that you can search in the channel. So there we go. So that's just going to create a task here. We're going to send it across two parameters, X and Y. It's going to add them together and return it. So the first thing you may have noticed is that Celery has now started to come up and you can see that all this information here regarding how it started um, up here, for example. So that's all interesting. Now, let me just uh, bring this back down again. So let's just also make sure that you go into the core and settings. Let's just register our new app called new app. Let's not forget to do that for good measure. Um, so just close down everything now, um, apart from the commands text here. So what we're gonna do now is test this. So let's go over to a new terminal window. We're going to port into the, into the container, our Docker container, which is called Django app. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's the, exec command here. So that takes us into the Django container. So from here, we can run these commands here. So I've placed them here in the commands text. So let's just go over into the shell first, and then we're just gonna grab. So from new app, that's our app name, and then tasks. So that's a file here. Inside of tasks, we're gonna import add. So we're gonna just uh, include this task in. So let's go ahead and do that. So once we have that in place, we can then go ahead and run the task. So we don't need task equals. So that's just gonna be add task name. And then we're gonna move across these two parameters, two and two, that's obviously gonna equal four. And there we go. So let's go ahead now, go back into our compose. And you can see what's happened is the task has been sent, it's been retrieved, and it's been then completed. So let's have a look at the task. So the task was to take the two parameters, X and Y, that was two and two, that I sent across, and then just to add them together, and the result is four. So everything seems to be working now. So I do apologize for not explaining all the celery aspects there. I'll leave a link in the video description where you can head back and view that tutorial on how to set up celery if you've not utilized celery before, but I'm kind of assuming you have because you've clicked on this tutorial. So, we kind of fumbled our way through that, but hopefully you can see now we have a baseline for Docker Compose when we want to utilize Postgres with Redis and Celery. So again, I do hope that was useful. Let me know, give me any feedback. Maybe there's too much information. Maybe I needed to explain a little bit more. I am trying to, as you've seen and heard, sorry, uh, that I'm trying to add in different commands. So these commands here that we're using may not be the final way that we might work with Docker, but I'm trying to be expansive as possible and just to showcase as many options, for example, the different builds that are available and then the different options that you might come across or steps that you might need to take. In this tutorial, it was the Postgres SQL, those additional steps, for example. So just please take that in mind. Um, like I said, hopefully it was useful and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.